Today we're looking at Oncidium orchids and the group that's called the Oncidium Alliance. For many of these are hybridised. We're at Mount Benac Orchids and Clive Halls is going to talk us through repotting Oncidium orchids and then we'll have a look at all of the aftercare requirements that you need to know to grow these wonderful orchids successfully. Okay, today we're going to look at repotting Oncidiums. This is an example here and uh, these are uh, an orchid that comes out of South America from fairly high altitudes originally so they're a cool growing orchid and they come in a wide variety of colours. That's just one example there. So we've put that aside. We'll look at repotting one of these today. This plant, as you can see here, hanging out over the edge of the pot, roots hanging out there, lots of old leaf bracts, needs a good clean up. So um, the first thing to do is to take it out of the pot and make sure you keep the label, you don't lose it. And give the pot a really good squash as you go around to loosen all the roots up. Also, the plant should have been watered before you start so that it's not in a bone dry condition. So <clears throat> we shake it out. You can see the old root system has broken down underneath the back bulbs there. These are the back bulbs that have lost their leaves. These are the leaf bulbs. These back bulbs don't have any live root on them. So the simple way to get rid of a lot of the dead root is first just to snip out your back bulbs. So we take a pair of secateurs which I keep in a mixture of methylated spirit and water, keep them sterile, and we just cut through the rhizome here, so, dispose of that, and then we have this good set of root system here. This rhizome here should be treated with a little bit of uh, powdered lime or sulfur or a steriprune, just so no infections get into that wound. Can you see there where I've chopped it back? I've left that one bulb on, but looking at the plant now, I think I'll take that one out as well. People are generally a little scared to cut bulbs away, but don't be worried because these bulbs once have no leaves, can't photosynthesize anymore. In the wild, they're left there just as a total reserve of energy and water that's translocated into the plant if things go badly. But as they're not doing anything on our plants in cultivation, we get rid of them. Then remove these dead leaf bracts here. Old flower spike. There we are. Nip it out. Old flower spikes in here. Cut them back out. Generally better to uh, get rid of all this <clears throat> and dead material. And we're looking underneath to make sure there's no insects that have, might have hidden away underneath the uh, dead leaves here because that's where scale and sometimes mealybug can harbour. Be very careful when you take those off because there's little growths in here, as you can see, and you don't want to take those off by accident. Now, we always pot oncidiums when they're in growth because that means the root activity is going to start straight away. And whether you can see here the little live root tips on these roots here, so it's all pretty active. And there's a little bit of dead root back here, but they're still firm. Roots are rotten when they're soft and pulpy. When they're firm like this, they're just roots that are a little bit dormant and they'll spring to life a little bit later. The roots that were hanging outside the pot will now go inside the pot. So there we have our plant ready to pot. <clears throat> this is the pot it came out of which is probably a little bit small for it now. So we select a new pot. This squat pot here, nicely drained pot, has little legs on it as it were, so it stands off the bench a little bit and really good drainage holes. Now then, <clears throat> we needed a potting mix. Very simple. We're using Orchiata Power, which is a nine to 12 millimeter size bark. Uh, and it's mixed with 20% super coarse perlite. Okay, so we have our plant ready to pot. We select our pot. I usually just pop the plant into the pot loose and have a look. What we're aiming for is to put the back of the plant, that is the part that doesn't have a new growth there, that's the front, this is the back. We put the back of the plant against the back of the pot, allowing room for this growth to grow for two years into the front of the pot. 
So once we're happy with that, we tuck the roots around. We put one handful of the potting mix, or two, into the bottom of the pot and firm it down with your fingers just to make sure that it's nice and centered. The base of the bulb should be level with the top of the pot. If it's not, just adjust the height like that. At this stage, it's easy to do. If you have it wrong, start again. Okay, so now we add a little bit of fertilizer. We've been using this for a long time. It's a slow release by Osmocote. It's a 9 11, 15, so it's low in nitrogen and it's high in potash, which is what these fine root depth fight plants really like. In a pot this size, I put three pinches. It's just dependent on the pot size. So a smaller pot, so that size, we just put one pinch in, that's an 85 mil pot. A slightly bigger one, we'd put two, and this one we put three. And it's not very exact how much you put in. A little bit too little is better than too much, but don't fuss about it. Okay, so we're ready to finish off. Just firm it down. I'm very much in favor of potting nice and firm because the more potting mix you can get in the pot at this stage, the longer it's going to last and the better the plant will do if it's undisturbed. So tuck it all down. Now you notice I put the fertilizer in the bottom of the pot. Orchids, it's always been said, go looking for food. And I believe that's true. And if we put the fertilizer down here, the roots won't just find a rich uh, environment at the top of the potting mix. They'll go down seeking for it and then they'll get the fertilizer and uh, it's a much better way of growing them to my way of thinking. In the second year, this plant has now made another bulb and it won't need repotting again. You sprinkle a little more of the osmocote on top of the pot to see it through for the next year. Then after that, it will be big enough to repot as we've just done here. Make sure you put the label back in the pot. I usually put my label to the back of the pot so I know where I can see it and face the growth to the front. Um, it should, all being well, hang in the pot after you've potted it. So uh, obviously with really big pots that doesn't work quite so well. Okay, so now we have our plant freshly potted and uh, what are we going to do with it next? First thing to do, aftercare is very important. So the first watering is important. To water it in, flush out a little bit of the dirty stuff off the bark. So I give it a good watering in. Let the dirty water run out of the pot then it's ready to put back on the bench and leave unwatered for probably two to three weeks so that it dries off again. Orchids are particularly uh, uh, used to having a wet dry environment. These are what we call fine rooted epiphytes. I showed you the, the little fine roots before. They're mostly growing out on a branch or a limb of a tree, sometimes on a rock, and their roots are used to spreading out underneath the mosses and lichens which are growing on the tree. So every morning and every evening they'll be covered in mist and the material will become moist and then it will dry out during the day and become moist again at night. So this is the wet dry cycle that they particularly like. Of course in uh, our environment they're not getting mist every morning and evening so they're being watered uh, from time to time. So we let the bark dry out till it's fairly dry and then we water them again. So that's important. The first three to four weeks of uh, uh, environment in the, in the new pot is important. If you get it saturated straight away and uh, leave it too wet, the roots will not develop down through the pot. We grow these plants a little bit on the dry side at all times. So where do we grow them? Out in the nursery, we generally run about 25% shade during the winter just to break the sun down a little bit when we do get it. Um, and during the summer, we run about 80% shade, which is a lot. But these plants, because they come from fairly high altitude, are used to having temperatures in the main between 25 and 30 degrees. That's a little bit difficult to achieve, but with shade, we can manage. So shade, important. The next thing is the humidity in the glasshouse. If you look underneath our benches, you'll see ferns and um, other short growing uh, selaginellas, which hold the moisture. The benches themselves are open, 
so that the moist air can rise up through the plants. Very important that you have a moist uh, environment. And of course, good air movement. It's absolutely vital. These plants come from an area that is high, uh, mountainous. There is always updraft, there is always air movement. You'll see a fan here um, that will be usually blowing half the day um, and stirring up the air. In the glass house is also another big fan up there. So good air movement. And good air movement is also dependent on having your plants widely enough spaced that the air can indeed get between them and the light shine down in between the leaves and get onto the bulbs. If you cram your plants together too tightly, uh, you will spoil both the light penetration and the air movement through the plants. Our plants in a nursery are usually a little bit too close together. We would generally suggest that you have um, the size of the pot as a space in between each one. So if they're in a four inch pot, they need four inches of space between the other pots. Um, watering um, depends entirely on the uh, humidity you have in the glass house. If we're having very dry weather, humidity naturally goes down, you'll need to water more often. Obviously it's dependent on heat. Hot, dry weather, you'll need to water more. Damp, cold weather, you need to water less. Generally speaking, and I don't like to lay down firm guidelines, but in the winter we're watering about once every two weeks. Uh, during the summer we're in the hot weather probably watering every day. But you must water according to the plant's requirements. Mostly these plants are growing up on benches, but you can see we do have them on wire racks as well. Some of these plants do very well mounted. Um, as I say, they're all epiphytes. They like having their roots out in the open. So there's several different ways you can grow these oncidiums. Uh, their leaves are usually quite green. Uh, they will become darker green in the winter and lighter green during the, the summer months. Once they, if you see black marks appearing on the leaves, that can suggest either they have fungal infection. So it's, uh, if you haven't kept up your good air movement, you might get some uh, fungal infection on the leaves, so spray with echo fungicide. Um, if they get burned, you will see a, a dark brown mark on top of the leaves. Insect control, they are prone to getting scale. Uh, that's number one infection. Uh, we control scale <coughs> by a monthly spray with echo oil, which we find is very effective. It's um, non-toxic. You don't have to dress up in any fancy gear to do it. It must be done regularly to be effective and the plants need to be clean in the first place. It's not very effective for cleaning up infections that are he uh, heavy on the leaf, but uh, once the plants are clean, this is very effective for keeping them clean. You may also get mealybug um, and the other uh, insect, well not insect, but um, slugs and snails, uh, they are of course, with the ground like we have them here, prone to getting around and can crawl up on the benches. So good slug and snail control is vital. They do quite a lot of damage to these new young uh, roots here. The little uh, garlic snails particularly will eat the tips out of these roots. You don't kind of notice it until suddenly you think the plant's not doing especially well and they've nibbled all those out. So very important to keep up with that. We were talking about aphids earlier on, and you can see here, just on the tip buds, a few of the little beggars getting going. They always start on these tip buds, there's another one over there, and uh, eventually will end up getting on all the buds, and they do a great deal of damage. So they must be sprayed. The echo oil is fine to use on those, um, and clean them up before they get any further into the uh, flower buds. We hope you enjoyed our look at Oncidium orchids. We'd like to thank Clive Halls from Mount Beanac Orchids. For further information, visit the Mount Beanac website, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and as always, good luck with your gardening.